Hi, I'm Bill Vales, and I'm here for another edition of Your Backyard. And today we're at Newtown, Newtown Hill, which is right off of Newtown Road. And I'm really excited to uh, make the trek through here. I've never been up here. And I have to say right away, from just turning off a Newtown Road, I feel like I'm in a different world. Uh, this is really, really something. And the first thing that we see here is the Barbara Chapin Community Gardens. And Barbara was a longtime resident of Littleton and uh, was instrumental in starting these uh, community gardens. And uh, there's a lot of uh, great stuff growing here. And of course, it's uh, attracting a lot of wildlife that's enjoying uh, the, the uh, vegetables that are growing, but also a lot of insect life. Newtown Hill is 98 acres of mixed habitat. So we have some meadow, swamp, perhaps some marsh area, and a lot of grassland area. So with the mixed habitat, I'm hoping that we're going to see some uh, uh, mixed uh, flora, fauna, and uh, and that's it, flora and fauna, that covers it. Uh, Newtown Hill is, as I said, right off of Newtown Road. And it's tucked back here, the parking area, about 500 feet. So um, let's start up Newtown Hill. I picked up at the kiosk uh, a map. And uh, this looks like this is going to be very helpful. There's a couple different trails here. Uh, it is a loop. It is set up as a loop trail. There's one that fo follows the uh, uh, tarred area up to the water tower, and uh, we're going to take that going up, uh, and that's going to open up to a really panoramic view. Uh, hopefully, we'll see into Boston. Um, and then as we come down, we're going to follow the loop along the edge habitat between the uh, meadow and the uh, woodland area and see what we see around here and hopefully start out, uh, end up where we started. Um, what I'd like to point out over here is uh, some interesting things. And uh, uh, Mark's keen eye of observation uh, found this, so I um, need to give him credit for that. But there's an interesting nest right here in this blackberry bush. And the, you can see the berries here. They're not quite ripe yet. But this nest here is quite interesting because it looks like it's had, uh, like it's layered, that there's been a couple inhabitants here. We have uh, sort of the um, hay and grass part of the nest here and then it looked like someone else has built a nest on top of it that seems to be out of some fine fine organic material not not quite sure what that is and there's also bits of paper that it's lined it with um, I don't see any eggs in it and I don't know if this nest was a leftover from the previous year, and this was uh, the, the new layer, the result of this year, or if <clears throat> this was built, the bottom layer was built this year and used, or perhaps the occupant was evicted, and the new occupant built this top, left, top nest on it, and um, uh, and use that. There are no eggshells here that I see, um, but those would uh, disintegrate in time. So uh, interesting find for Mark. That's one from Mark. Um, what I want to point out here is uh, some beautiful Queen Anne's lace. And um, this is on the verge of opening in my left hand, and this has opened in, the, in my right hand. Beautiful, dainty, flowers on it and it has this just lovely habitat in the wood 
in the wind rather of it just sort of swaying to and f to and fro sort of like that we've just taken maybe 30 steps and we were greeted by uh, a couple beautiful cedar wax wings and um, I'm sure there's more here they tend to be in in um, fairly localized tight flocks you know I usually see them 20 25 I see cedar wax wings pretty much seasonally um, spring summer right around the median strips of 495 the intersection of 495 and 119 they they like to eat um, berries uh, and with berries uh, ripening in our uh, habitat here in New England, it's, it's uh, no wonder that we see them. I also see along the edge here what looked like a number of eastern kingbirds. So um, we'll see if we get a shot of those later on. Well, we've reached the top via the access road. Got us up here pretty quick. However, um, a little bit winded. Not so much me, but Mark is incredibly winded. Um, we're up here at the water tower, and of course this being a, uh, um, an elevated area, probably on the order of 400, 450 feet above sea level, uh, the town uses this uh, to store water and uh, have the effects of gravity to let the water flow to lower places. You can see the beautiful view. Um, uh, this would be sort of to the east, northeast, I would say. I, I would say. Um, <clears throat> we see Nagog Pond right down here. That's where the uh, Kaliva or Kalava Club is, the Finnish uh, club. We see that, and then we see the various ridges that go to the distance. It's, it's, it's really a beautiful view. All these birds behind us, they all appear to be cedar wax wings. It's as if they were summons because I was coming out today. Um, uh, but I've seen 10, 15 cedar wax wings just uh, going back and forth, which is really a delight. Um, we're in this field now. I believe this field is hayed. Uh, a couple times a year so we're not going to walk you know tramp all through the field we'll sort of walk along the edges and um, uh, continue along the edge down the loop trail so that's where we're going well we're coming around the trail the trails denoted by the yellow trail mark and don't help out the nails in these in, in these trail markers leave them um, off the bark gives the uh, um, allows the tree to grow and interestingly this tree we we pondered a little bit about what this is but this appears to be a black locust tree which we don't see a lot of black locusts in in Littleton uh, I know of one other in um, Tophet's Chasm of all places um, but this appears to be another black locust, and a, a nice characteristic of the black locust is it's hard as nails. So black locust is used for fence post. It will not rot um, compared to other woods. Uh, I think there's a lot of black locusts down Cape Cod, down that way. But that's what that is, very deep furrowed bark. And I hear some robins above us squawking away. Well, we see some more blackberries. Some are ripe and some are not. I wondered a little bit when we first saw the unripened raspberries, black raspberries down by the bird's nest, where some of the ripe ones had gone. And I since learned coming up here that Mark had eaten them all. Um, but here's some uh, ripe ones and unripened ones. And I'm gonna partake in a couple. Boy, these look beautiful. Mm. These are very good. I, I can sympathize with why Mark ate them. 
We're just heading down, following the yellow trail and heading down kind of the back slope from the uh, height of land here. And uh, to me, this looks like it would be a great place to do some birding because of the edge habitat. We have the break between the field and the um, uh, forest here. And I'm seeing the types of trees that uh, I'm seeing here. I see some beech trees, uh, a lot of uh, hickory nuts I found coming up. So that's indicative of American hickory, a lot of white oak, uh, some red oak. I'm sorry, this is a red oak. I've seen smaller white oaks, lots of raspberries, uh, blackberries around. Uh, and I really see a lot of birds flitting all in and out going into the trees and uh, this really feels like a delightful ha uh, habitat in here um, nice and quiet and uh, I don't think I know I was in Littleton if I was just dropped here from a spaceship um, this is this is really uh, an interesting place, so I'm looking forward to continuing around this edge here. Okay, we've walked uh, across the back of the property um, beyond the uh, height of land, and now we're going to enter the woods, and you can see here uh, it's all marked with yellow blazes, and this is going to take us into the woods. Okay, uh, interesting... Um, large hickory tree here. This may be the largest hickory tree that I've seen in Littleton. Um, and how do I know it's a hickory tree? Well, the hickory leaves, which are first start, boy, probably 40 feet up, but I should be able to find a few hickory nuts. Oh, here's some hickory nuts. And here's some hickory nuts. So that also gives us verification that it's a hickory tree. And these are really liked by turkeys. Uh, squirrels love them. I know that from my house because they strip all the, uh, all the uh, nuts off the trees. These are, these are hickory. And this is not a shagbark hickory. This is a um, non-shagbark hickory. Uh, and an interesting um, is to note this cavity up here. That seems like that would make a great place for something to live in. Perhaps an owl might take up a uh, roost there or uh, some sort of mammal. Um, yeah, this is a uh, great looking hickory tree. Maybe the biggest I've seen in Littleton. I mean, that's, uh, let's see, 30 inches wide, maybe? 30 inch diameter. Wow, very neat, very cool. Well, we're now in the woods. We've entered from the field and Modeled shade, beautiful environment. Um, we're into a hemlock grove. And there's a lot of hemlock trees around. And they have a very wispy nature to them. It's a conifer tree, very small um, uh, cone that they have. But I see a lot of hemlock around. There's also some oak. And a very, very delightful habitat. Okay, we've walked about 100 feet into the woods and we've encountered a blue uh, trail marker and a yellow. So we're going to uh, venture down the blue and uh, the, the map makes reference to both these trails. And we're kind of in a flat area here and again there's hemlock all around. I'm starting to see some black birch trees around as well. But it's quite, um, it's quite open in here and the nice thing about uh, an open woodland environment as you can see a little bit of distance and I 
I see some birds coming in and uh, a big black birch right here, right behind me. Beautiful black birch. Littleton is really known for its black birch. I'm struck by how much black birch there is in Littleton, uh, one of our dominant species, not just in Littleton, but of this general, general area. So let's go down the blue. I was just saying to Mark how much Indian pipe I had at our house this year, and we stumbled across this, which is Indian pipe that's gone by. Um, if this was just coming up, it would be beautiful white because it has no chloroform in it, and it's bent over like a pipe, hence the name Indian pipe. And this has gone by, and looking around here, I see it in a number of areas. Now, when we were doing a, a, a Your Backyard, I believe with my sister, last year, we were s scouring the land for the Indian pipe, and we couldn't find any. And this year, it's all over the place. I'm struck by how much Indian pipe is at our uh, house. And I'm wondering if that's a reflection of how much uh, water we've had. Um, but this is Indian pipe that's gone away, and I see, uh, gone, gone by rather, and I see a, a bit of it around here. So um, that's what that is. Very interesting in our New England forests. And I see here, as I get up, we're starting to enter into a beech grove. I see a lot of American beech tree here, denoted by the smooth bark. So it's going to be interesting to see what we see in there as we walk along. Well, we're having a delightful time meandering through here. And we notice as we're in the forest, uh, we have stone walls. And uh, if we look around at the woods, uh, as big as these trees are, my hunch is very few of them are 100 years old, if that. Um, so I think that speaks to the fact that this land was probably used in the not so distant past, perhaps for farming, grazing. And in order to clear the fields, what the farmers did was picked up the rocks and built a wall. And that's uh, why we see walls um, in the middle of woods in New England. Uh, stone walls are just a, a beautiful um, fact of life in New England. Uh, no one has stone walls like New England. Well, here's a very interesting mushroom or fungus, I should say. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what it is. I will certainly take this as a assignment to see what it is. I, I don't even want to do a taste test of this because uh, I want Mark to be able to function throughout the entire trip. Normally I would have him taste mushrooms. Uh, you should never uh, eat any mushrooms unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, they can be highly toxic. Um, but these are very interesting. Wow. Very neat. So we hope there's no toxicity on my hand here. This is very, there's a cluster of one, two, three. It looks like one that's here that isn't doing, doing good. Um, very interesting. I can't wait to look up what this is. And something I want to point out here when I just went down is um, do we rem remember what this is from our past shows? This is an American chestnut tree. Okay, and if you remember the, the leaves um, remind us of ocean waves. And that's what this is. Now, the American chestnut tree was affected by the chestnut blight 
back at the turn of the century. So uh, all we don't get mature chestnut trees uh, anymore. They are not extinct. They they still grow, but they tend to after get maybe 20, 30 feet high, they will succumb uh, to the blight. There is some work going on through genetics to try to come up with a um, uh, sort of a hybrid American chestnut. And, um, uh, and this was a very uh, valuable tree in the New England habitat. It actually, it, it extended well beyond New England. It, it went up the entire east coast and the blight um, virtually wiped out the entire population from Maine to Georgia. Billions of trees were wiped out in the span of 20 or 30 years. Um, and it made room for other species to come in. But we still see them here. Walking along this dead, looks like a dead white pine, we see some fungus here known as witch's butter, perhaps named for the orange color for Halloween. I, I really don't know, but we see it coming out all through. Quite attractive in color. Again, I don't know. Um, I certainly wouldn't eat it, um, but it's uh, very colorful. It adds some beautiful color. And we see it here growing on the lichen. A little bit of moss as well. Beautiful. Well, we've just entered the uh, AT&T access road, and we're gonna go down here um, just a few steps uh, because there is a trail sign down here that I want you to make note of. And this is along the access road, AT&T access road. A lot of beautiful ferns through here. A lot of princess pine. And here we have a trail sign, the Sprong Trail to Tahatawan Road. So that says to me, if we proceed along here, that will take us to Tahatawan Road. The Sprong Trail, uh, I believe, is named for Virginia Sprong and her husband. Uh, longtime residents in in town here. Virginia passed away at over 100 years of age, um, I believe in the last year or so. Um, but that's the Sprong Trail to Tahatawan Road. So we're going to go back this way now. Back the way we came. Well, walking along the AT&T access road, came across this well, kind of ratty looking feather. Um, at first I thought it was a turkey, but I don't believe this is a turkey because a turkey feather would tend to be flat. Perhaps this is a feather from a um, red-tailed hawk or some variety of hawk. But I'm just gonna leave that sort of where I found it because I don't have a salvage permit. And if my sister knew I was picking up a feather without a salvage permit, I would never hear the end of it. So we're gonna put that back down. And here we have uh, some beautiful ferns here. And um, I'm thinking, Mark asked me what type of ferns these are. These are very dainty looking firm, ferns. Okay, this particular fern I believe is a Massachusetts fern, and the reason I believe it's a Massachusetts fern is that the lower pinnae, and that's what this, this part of the plant is, sort of bends in from the other pinnae, and that's a characteristic of the Massachusetts fern. Now, a close relative or look-alike to the Massachusetts fern is the New York fern, which uh, tends to have the characteristic that there's a tapering of the pinna down towards the bottom of the uh, frond. Uh, and uh, the tapering, you can remember that it would be a New York fern, that New Yorkers burn the candle at both ends. And that's why 
you would see the tapering here. But the more I look at this, um, this does not show a, a, a graduation of pinna towards the bottom. Um, so I believe, I believe that this is a, um, a Massachusetts fern. And this is very dainty, very lacy, looks, looks quite nice. Now up here, we have a different type of fern. And uh, Mark spotted this. And one difference between this, this one is broke, between the Massachusetts fern and this, you can see the difference in the color. There, there are certainly different shades of, uh, shades of green. But another difference is that this fern, which is a bracken fern, um, breaks out into three. It has, the, the frond breaks out into three. You can see that right here. And the bracken fern has a root ball that can go down 20, 25 feet. These are very hardy, okay? Very, very hardy. And this is a bracken fern. So um, that's great that Mark spotted that because I don't think last year he would have um, spotted that. But if you remember, we had fern madness at Yap property. And I think um, he remembered a lot of um, uh, ferns. Now, it's a little buggy back here. Um, it doesn't bother me. Mark's been complaining and moaning about it for virtually the whole hike. Um, I've dealt with it, okay? I've been trying to get him to just suck it up uh, because we still have a ways to go. Um, but if, if you do get bothered by bugs, you can bring a little, little bug spray with you and um, use that. Okay. When you reach the attractive fence that's behind me, you're going to turn left. And as you turn left, you're going to see that we're at the trail intersection of the blue and yellow right here. Now, the yellow is going to take us back to where we came, but there's also another yellow path that goes down this way straight ahead to me and we're going to take that uh, and that's going to take us uh, on the on the loop well we took a little detour from our original path because we wanted to find the large american beech tree over 36 inches in diameter uh, that's pointed out on the map and here is the large american beech tree and uh, it's a beauty. It's, uh, seen, it's seen some better days. There's a, uh, a bit of rot on it here, but it's all of 36 inches in diameter. And you see the remnants of, of past loves and relationships that people have. The American Beach, one of the uh, curses with the American beach is it has such smooth bark it it makes quite a target for people carving and um, you can see that people have carved in this tree for years uh, some of the carving is quite high up uh, I suspect either the tree was much shorter which I doubt I suspect people um, were challenged to get up higher, and, and that's what they did. Uh, parts of this tree are actually wired together. We noticed a couple wires that are holding uh, portions of the tree together, um, trying to fight against gravity, spreading out the uh, branches in different directions. So it's, uh, it's interesting to hear Mark's recollections of um, some names that he may be familiar with. Uh, but I'm sure that this was uh, a favorite gathering spot of, uh, of um, youth and probably still is. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, uh, if I went to school in Littleton, this is a place where I probably would have gone in school. I had my places in Stowe. Well, talk about going from 
one type of habitat to another, here we are in what looks like a marsh habitat. Um, see, the, see a lot of cattails here? Indicative of a marsh. Some sweet, um, sweet pepper. Um, some grape. A lot of wild grape. Don't see any grapes on them. Oh, I do see grapes. Yep. Pick a few grapes. A lot of grape. Um, it looks like a um, pretty expansive marsh here. And then we probably go to a little more of a swampy area. And this brings the question is, what's the difference between a marsh and a swamp? I was wondering that myself the other night, and I looked it up, and a marsh tends to have uh, grasses and sedges and hummocks, and a swamp will be a little more upland and have a little more woody uh, sort of environment where we'll see um, uh, trees, swamp maple, things, things uh, of that nature. So this is a, this is a marsh that we're in. Um, and, and this sort of rounds out the habitat that we've seen here. We've seen meadow, woodland, and now we're in a marsh. And this is going to lead over to a, um, a swamp. And uh, frankly, as we were coming out of the woods, it felt like we were getting a little lower. We started seeing a, a, a lot of different fern species, and we were looking through seeing an object that we couldn't quite identify, and then as we walked around, we realized it was water. And this would be a great place for birding, uh, just a wonderful place for birding. So I suggest everyone take advantage of it. I'm very surprised, actually pleasantly surprised, at the size of this body of water here. I've never known this exists, and uh, I've lived here for, um, geez, the better part of 40 years. Um, this is beautiful. And we're just off a new town road. Never knew this existed. This. This bush here with the white on it, sweet pepper bush. See some bees on it. The little bit of purple that we see in the marsh is, is a purple loosestrife. It's a invasive species. Um, I have to say a little bit looks pretty, um, but when it does overpower, uh, uh, a marsh, um, it does a lot of damage, but this is a very pleasant surprise. Good place for birding. This is a very interesting trail. We're right on the edge of the marsh, and you really get a chance to observe some marsh habitat. And it's uh, fairly thick where we are right now. Uh, but there are some nice uh, openings for observation, and we think we've seen a couple birds. Mark thinks he saw a hummingbird, which I don't doubt, bouncing back and forth on the uh, loose stripe um, uh, flowers. We'll, we'll check out that um, uh, video footage when we get back to the uh, studio. But that brings to mind, uh, in this part of the country, we have uh, one, one type of hum hummingbird that's a, a regular uh, inhabitant, and that's the ruby-throated hummingbird. The male has a dark ruby patch on its throat, and the female uh, does not. Um, but something I wanted to mention that I got some great footage of um, just yesterday from my sister is uh, video and pictures of a hummingbird moth. And looking at this moth and watching its feeding habits and um, just the way it um, uh, flew around, 
Uh, at first glance, you think you're looking at a hummingbird, both in size and habits. So we're going to uh, uh, share that footage with you, and it's going to be interesting when we get back to the studio to see if Mark did, in fact, uh, see a hummingbird, which would be fairly common around here. Another bird that we saw that wasn't making any noise, I thought might have been a marsh wren, which would be common at a marsh, but it may also have been a variety of wobbler. Uh, a lot of wobblers um, will be coming through now uh, as they uh, start um, charging up for the winter migration, even though it's August, you know, the birds are on their own schedule. Uh, they're done breeding and they're uh, going through their molt right now and um, uh, charging up to get ready for their big flight. So I can't wait to see the video to see what we um, got there. Well, isn't this a pleasant surprise? Cocktails, anyone? Beautiful dock here. There's no attribution of who built this. I wonder if it was a Boy Scout project or what, but um, what a beautiful vantage point looking out over the marsh. Mark and I just observed a um, marsh hawk come in. Um, we're seeing literally hundreds of dragonflies, all different varieties around here. I have a couple right next to me here. Lily pads and uh, some of the flowers have opened up towards the other end. Uh, what a delightful place this is. And you know, when we started out on this, which seems like a week ago, um, Mark mentioned, uh, okay, we got this field here. What else is there? Well, this is the gem of the walk, you know, coming on to this uh, marsh and being able to have a little bit of elevation and being able to look out at the marsh and um, I never knew this was here. You know, I can hear a little bit of Route 2. Um, I've traveled by this road uh, along Newtown Road a thousand times. Never knew this was here. Um, I really urge people to explore the Littleton Conservation Trails. This is another gem, Newtown Hill. Beautiful. We're walking up from the marsh and the hill is back in play. Definitely going up now. The variety of ferns in here is striking. Be coming back here with Carol and we're going to be looking at ferns. Number of glacial boulders throughout here. Well, we're at the end of our hike. We're, we've emerged back into the field. We started over there where the kiosk is. This has been an uh, absolute delight. Um, as we promised, there was a variety of habitat here. We started off with a, uh, a meadow, then we went into a woods. We had a variety of woods habitat. We had hemlock grove, beech groves, a lot of hickory trees, variety of oaks. And then we had the pleasant surprise of an absolutely beautiful marsh, a marsh environment that had a route that went along the edge of the marsh with a beautiful dock that you could sit on and observe the marsh, which put you a few feet above the marsh. Very, very nice, um, nice hike. I'm, I'm, I'm just continually amazed when I go on these um, hikes for your backyard that these places exist. 
you know, and I've driven by this thousand times, 10,000 times, who knows, over 40 years, and never knew that that beautiful marsh exists. And I'm certainly gonna be back here to do some bird watching. I wanted to make mention that one of the guides that, that we use in preparing these shows is the Guide uh, to Conservation Land of Littleton, Massachusetts. And this was by Art Lazarus. Uh, Art was a longtime friend of myself and also a friend of Littleton that uh, he served on the Littleton Conservation Trust as well as um, other, other positions in town. And Art wrote this book. And Art recently uh, passed away, and I'd like to dedicate this show in memory of Art Lazarus. So thank you very much for watching this edition of Your Backyard. I look to see you again on our next edition. Take care.